Okay, bonjour everyone. Um, thank you uh, for still being here. Uh, it's really a shame that the that lots of the Prowling research team have to leave now because um, this presentation is really mostly for you. <laughs> um, it's a real privilege for me to be back here in the Seychelles to report on the progress of um, Valley de May's Yellow Crazy Ant program. And as I'm trying to portray with this picture, um, it's as much about people as it is about ants. Not controlling people, but it, people are very important in this program. <laughs> Um, so with this presentation, I really don't want to spend much time talking about the history uh, of, of yellow crazy ants and, and why, this, why we're doing this control program. I feel like that's been documented very well and talked about many times before. And what we really all want to know is the results, right? So uh, very, very quickly, um, just a quick reminder, uh, Yellow crazy ants first appeared in the Valley de May in 2009. Uh, using survey points uh, around the Valley de May, uh, their distribution and abundance was tracked over time. And you'll probably all remember when at the end of 2018, uh, yellow crazy ants covered the whole area of the Valley de May. Um, and uh, pitfall trap surveys over that time uh, also showed a, a pretty slow increase in their population at first, but once they did reach that 100% coverage, their numbers just skyrocketed. And uh, alarmingly, one of the last, or one of the last pitfall surveys before the control program started, um, more than 17,000 yellow crazy ants were counted in the Valley de May alone. So uh, by 2019, um, the impacts of yellow crazy ants uh, on ecosystems and native species were very well documented worldwide and also lots of horrible observations uh, locally. And so there was really um, more than enough to warrant launching uh, an intensive control program for yellow crazy ants that uh, targeted all stages of their life cycle in order to be successful and also avoided non-target impacts. Um, and what was decided on was to uh, start using some, uh, some toxic baits with the active ingredient of fipronil um, and uh, intensive monitoring of target and non-target organisms was implemented. So, uh, what happened next? Well, um, in these, these pictures here, uh, in, in orange shows the, uh, the area that's been um, covered by these baits. Uh, there have been eight uh, bait deployments so far. Firstly, they were restricted to the Valley de May itself and uh, later expanded to include parts of Font Pepere and also like a, a buffer zone around the Valley de May. And then um, the last few bait deployments have been uh, in response to, to where monitoring has picked up yellow crazy ant presence rather than um, distributing bait across the whole site uh, every time. Um, but despite that, it, each time these, these are huge areas that have to be covered uh, really, you know, efficiently and thoroughly by bait on foot. And um, it really needs to be said that this is no easy task. E each time there's a bait deployment, um, it's, it's a massive undertaking. Uh, the terrain is difficult, the vegetation you have to get through is difficult, um, and the sheer number of people needed to pull it off. <laughs> is um, is amazing. So th these pictures here just show some of the people um, that have been involved over the years with going out into the forest and actually distributing that bait. But uh, but this is really just the tip of the iceberg. Behind all of that, there's a whole lot of other people involved in um, different aspects. Uh, there's all this coordination and all this strategizing that that have to go into to each bait deployment. And I, I don't think there's anything else 
like it really that brings together so many people uh, from not just from the Prowler research team but also from head office and also other organisations. Um, so it's a huge amount of effort. Um, another, another example of the, the amount of effort that goes into this control program is with the monitoring um, of which there's there's several monitoring methods, I, as I said before, of, of the yellow crazy ants themselves and also um, other, other species. And uh, these, these monitoring programs, um, they're carried out several times a year. You could say, you could say they're tedious, uh, repetitive, sometimes painful, um, yet the, the Prowler research team have, have um, have conducted them with regularity, uh, yeah, in a, in a really amazing way. So, just to um, just to give you an example, to the end of of last year, um, the team has conducted eleven surveys of mollusks and geckos, uh, in which they've counted more than three thousand four hundred animals. Uh, they've they've conducted ten pitfall trap surveys. This is across the Valley de Maya and Fon Papier as well, all of this monitoring, um, in which they've counted more than 60,000 ants. And they've also conducted uh, 12 ant activity transects, which, which we also call jam transects, um, during which the team has counted more than 125,000 ants. So the monitoring alone is no mean feat. Uh, so what does all this monitoring tell us. So for the, the pitfall surveys, uh, um, the pitfall surveys show a, a very, um, oh, so firstly, I'll, I'll just point out in these, in these figures here, the orange vertical bars are, um, they represent each bait deployment. So in, in the first um, box of all these box plots and these and these figures um, obviously is before the first ever deployment of the fipronil baits um, so very clearly uh, in the valley de may there's a, a massive drop in yellow crazy ant numbers following the first bait deployment and then later on in the buffer zone in fond papier once the once the bait deployments expanded into those areas um, and a similar pattern is seen with the uh, ant activity transects or jam transects. Um, after the, the first bait deployment, um, numbers of yellow crazy ants dropped <laughs> massively in the Valley de May um, and later in Fond Papier as well. But I think um, the, these jam transects, uh, what it seems like they're really good for is is picking up um, ant numbers when they're at extremely low density. Yeah, they they record um, yellow crazy ant presence more often than the pitfall surveys do. Um, in the the buffer zone here, you can see a bit of um, of yellow crazy ant activity uh, occurring there. But I think it's 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 worth pointing out that this is still um, a very low density of ants. The, these jam transects are picking up um, very localised incursions into the buffer zone around the Valley de May, and so that, that's really useful. That's what we want. Um, uh, another thing that we can use all of this, this data for is uh, to look at what, what other ants, non, um, not yellow crazy ants, but other species, are, are being picked up in those pitfall surveys and, and the jam transects uh, and what's happening to them over time. So in this figure here, you can see in the Valley de May, um, the, with the pitfall trap surveys in blue, um, they, the, the numbers of other non-yellow crazy ants that show up in those pitfall trap surveys are generally pretty low, so it's quite hard to... Um, quite hard to find a trend there, but, but with the jam transects, they show uh, an increase um, in the, the number of other ants over time. And um, 
and from Papir too, the, the jam transects show uh, show an increase in other ants as as the number of yellow crazy ants has decreased over time. Though, uh, whether this is a good or a bad thing, uh, I guess depends on um, what species of other ants are actually increasing in response to the declining yellow crazy ant numbers and and you know what the diversity of those other ants is, and I haven't had time to look into that yet. Um, moving on to mollusk and gecko abundance, which which we can determine from the mollusk and gecko surveys. Uh, yeah, as has been reported um, in in other places, the the numbers of mollusk and geckos has clearly uh, has clearly risen um, over the time of the of this. Um, intensive ant control program. Uh, in this figure here, uh, these bars are showing the average number of uh, animals observed per tree um, in the survey, and you can see the proportion of that, uh, that total number that is made up by geckos and the proportion that's made up by snails and slugs, and, and you can see that both groups are, uh, have increased over time. And I also think what's interesting about this uh, about this data is that um, in 2010, um, Chris Kaiser Bunbury and, and Nancy and others did a survey, a similar survey of mollusk and gecko abundance in the Valley de May, where they um, they looked at the the abundance in areas of the forest that were invaded by yellow crazy ants and areas that were not invaded by yellow crazy ants. And um, they reported very similar figures um, in terms of uh, the average number of animals per tree. Um, in the invaded areas of the forest back then, um, they got a very similar figure to what we have got now of or what we had at the beginning of 0 0.54. And then they got a very similar number in the uninvaded areas of the forest to what we're getting now. Um, and so this may suggest that, that numbers of mollusks and geckos might be getting back to um, what they would be naturally in the absence of yellow crazy ants. Um, and a similar trend can be seen in Fon Papier, although Fon Papier has always had very, since we started monitoring, much higher numbers of mollusks and geckos, and, um, and the numbers fluctuate more over time. So that's another thing that would be really good to investigate further. Yeah, so, so in conclusion, um, I think four years on from, from the implementation of this intensive yellow crazy ant control, um, it's very clear that, that um, in order for the, the native animals of the Valley de May to, be, to flourish, um, yellow crazy ants need to be at low density. So it's very important to keep up, uh, to keep up that program. Um, however, yeah, there's lots of work going on all around the world on yellow crazy ants uh, control and their biology and everything like that. So I would really recommend to the team to keep an eye on um, new methods, uh, new control, uh, new information that's coming out to look for um, other ways that we could run this program more efficiently because, as I said, it's a huge amount of time and effort and resources. Uh, yeah, and finally, the, all this monitoring that team are doing are, is generating masses of, of data that's, uh, that could have multiple uses uh, if someone just had the time to look at it properly. I was only able to show you just a tiny, tiny part of, of that data. I didn't even look at all the methods that the team are using um, or, yeah, of all the different ways that you could look at it. So. Yeah, um, that's it from me. Uh, merci beaucoup. <laughs>